Levantaré mi bandera Estando en mi país o estando allá afuera Porque para mí, mira, no existen fronteras Yo levantaré mi bandera oh. Levantaré mi bandera Estando en mi país o estando allá afuera Porque para mí, mira, no existen fronteras No, no uh, oh, oh. Y es que hay mucho sentimiento Lo grito al viento De ser latino, nunca me arrepiento Lo digo desde la Suiza And welcome to a very special edition of the Latin Babbler Show. I am your host, the Latin Babbler. I am joined with the crew. We have Cecilia from Around the Way Talk and from La Vida Poetry. And we have Paula Garcia from Paula Knows Something Podcast. Our guest today is a student advisor, content creator, host of Find Your Purpose and Latinx Greek Life Podcast. You can also see him on Be Real uh, from Bellatina. And on social media, where he is empowering, educating, and guiding students on how to overcome adversities. Welcome to the show, Benjamin Perez, a.k.a. Perez the Advisor. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I've never been introduced this way. This is super cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let, let's dive into what you do. So um, a lot of the what you do in the area, it, it resonates with people, maybe because it's extremely relatable. So you, like, you take your content, you add humor to it. Um, you add guidance through a lot of quotes, a lot of messages. You also do, you know, through your podcast, a lot of the, the, the topics that you, you go through. So, and you showcase like some huge topics. I mean, we're talking about like first generation being what it is to be first generation Latino, Latina is there's, you know, some discussions that I, I saw you with, uh, Yaribel Mercedes when you guys were doing the anti-blackness in the community. I was there for some of that. Um, and then you talk a lot about masculinity, which, you know, breaking the stereotypes. What made you decide that this was going to be the content that would be for you, like that you wanted to talk about? That's a great question, uh, Rafael, because the, the page started essentially for education, right? Just for supporting students in, in higher ed, uh, first generation students of color. Um, but slowly and slowly last year, the momentum of like a, the amount of folks who started following me and started like really supporting me and, and building that larger community there. I've, I've always had all this curiosity of, of things and like questioning things and wanting to learn more aside from the norm, right? Challenging things that, you know, from, a, from the house to the, to the culture, to the community, to things we see. And I was like, you know what, like, can I be that person? to challenge things or to, or to question things in the larger spectrum, right? Not just in my own life. So I'm like, can I bring these things of my per personality, things that I think of on my social platform? Is this the right space? Like, what is my, what is Perez the advisor for, right? So um, I was kind of nervous of, of bringing topics like, like that, right? Talking more about mental health. I'm like, I'm not an expert in the field. I'm not... Um, you know, Afro-Latino, I am not all these things. They're not part of my identity. How, it might, is it okay for me to bring these things onto this, to the platform? And I started thinking like, yeah, like I can bring folks and co collaborate with folks who are experts in that or who are identified like that. So we can bring awareness, right? So I've, like the pillars on my page are, you know, empowerment and it's the uh, awareness at the same time, the Latino community. And I'm like, I can bring some of these topics that I'm curious and I want to learn more about, but I also want my community to be aware of, right? So um, to inspire some of these changes that I feel like are important. So now in 2022, I'm like, you know what? For season four, find your purpose, I'm going to do it. <laughs> and if it bothers someone yeah. that are following me, <laughs> no me importa, right? So this season four is definitely going to be bringing more topics of that, more intentional topics that I feel like it's an, it's, I'm tired of like not having them, you know? And for those folks that are having them, Some people are just like, ah, oh, yeah, look, no pasa nada. Like, you know, it's, it's not my identity. I don't struggle with that, <laughs> you know? So, no, I want to talk about LGBTQ+, Afro-Latinos. I want to talk about indigenous. I want to talk about women, men, mental health, all these things. Yeah. So um, I'm shifting the page to, to becoming more of a, let's really talk about things, you know? Um, and, yeah, talk about the education and bring some of those things up. So it was just more of me just feeling comfortable and brave of like, I'm going to, I'm going to do it. <laughs> I want this page to be, uh, uh, you know, like I said, bringing awareness and empowerment for la comunidad and inspiring that change that we need as a community uh, that I need as a male, right? Things that I struggle. Same thing. When I talk about my college experience, I talk about 
like I t- like I mentioned, the pressures. So I mentioned mental health, the um, not eating well, the going hungry, uh, all these things, right? The pressures from family. Yes, there's a lot of pride, but there's a lot of pressure, which we can talk about. Yeah. And, and all these things, right? So I just like, I want this page to be authentic and real, right? So um, this 2022, I feel like that's where I'm headed. And I'm going to try to do that. If, like, like I said, if people stop, don't like what they see, pues no pasa nada, right? <laughs> I'm still going to. Well, that was our that was our discussion back in October. You guys were asking me the question, you know, uh, what do you feel about being apologetic with some of the things that we talk about here? <clears throat> and for me, it was very simple. Like, I, I really don't care. So if I'm going to I'm going to talk about these things regardless whether people want to do it or not. I'm going to post something. If I see my followers drop, then you know what? You weren't the audience for my show. That's just the way I see it. There's another three that are going to join in where the other three were lost, you know, and so. For me, that's that's the approach that I've taken when we did that here at the Latin Babbler show. And I saw that you were doing the same thing for season four. And I was like, oh, man, he's hitting on some topics now. You know what I'm saying? Cause, <laughs> well, yeah, cause I mean, you, the, it's, the you definitely were one of those inspirations. No, like I heard you in that interview. I was like, all right. You know, I know the segment for Be Latina. I talk about it's be real, right? So I try to uh, push the, the, the guest to to be like, I'll oh, ask them a question here and there so we can talk about real stuff on top of their own story. Yeah. Um, and when I heard you and I've heard different people, I'm like, you know what? Like, yeah. Well, let me, I want to be that too, you know, because I, I, I am in legit like eso lo que pasa por mi mente. <laughs> it's not just me trying to be this person like oh look at this guy i'm like no no that's legit me if if people for that for my loved ones if they listen if you ask them is benjamin this and this yeah he is <laughs> yeah. yes he is you yeah. know so for good or for bad but i i i, I am you no know? so i try to be intentional and, and there's a lot of things like i said when top, talking about these these topics like you have to be very intentional. You have to be very um, cuidadoso how you say things. Like, and if you mess up, like with my conver- with my conversation with Yari Bell, with Yari, um, she 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 asked me some question. I'm like, you know what? Like, yeah, it's me. Like, like it, it, she put me on the spot, but it was true. Like hell, like that's true. Like that's for feedback. What someone reached out to me in in the fall of 2021 asking uh, for Latina Colombiana. She was like, hey, like um, I don't know her name, so I apologize, but. She was like, hey, like, I love your content. I love your series. I love everything. But when are you going to bring more, like, Afro-Latinos into the space? I was like, oh, snap. That is very, very true. I you haven't. Put on notice. You know, I haven't done it. And I'm like, well, <laughs> don't, don't they stand, right? So I, I started really researching, and it wasn't because that was my excuse. But no, listen, no, I don't have them. Like, the circle that I follow, none of them are Afro-Latinos, right? So then yeah. now... I was like, okay, so she she mess she sent me a couple names, a couple pages. I'm like, okay, well, let me do the research then. Every time I have a guest, I have I do research. So let me do research on this time. Right? So I start recent researching more and more, and that's how Fanya Ribel, Dr. Angel Jones, and I've have a couple um Pavel who I collaborated last week. And moving forward, I'm being more intentional now, like of the guests, of the yeah. topics, and of this page. So so yeah, I mean, this is it's gonna be a good year. Yo, I got a question because you were talking about mental health. Do you ever get to the point where you're just like, because because of how often you you talk about mental health and a lot of the things that these students are going through? I know that we talk about it in our group on the Latin Babbler show. We often wonder what's it like for creators who talk about mental health. Do you wake up some days just sitting there going, you know what, I'm just not going to do this today. This is very mentally consuming and I just need a break because it's not healthy for me to constant, because I'm assuming you get a lot of DMs of people saying, hey, mental health, and this is what I'm going through. And my daughter, who's, who's an influence, she gets a lot of DMs from people who are talking about, hey, your, you know, your, your things were inspirational. I was dealing through all this. Th-. You're almost like a therapist because you're like, an, you know, you're an online creator. Do you ever get that sense where you're just like, OK, I need to take a break because some of this is affecting me. And then you go and seek like your own space to be able to kind of recover? Yes. To answer your question, yes. It is tough though, you know, because we're so glued to the phone, right? Or I'm so glued to the phone, I speak for myself and it's thinking of like, oh, I should create, I should create. I should write more quotes. I'm feeling inspired. I should feel this. I should do this. I should be on there replying to everybody, liking all the comments and like sharing all the stuff. And I'm like, man, when is it time for me to just put it away and and disconnect? So there's days where it's like I'm better at it and there's days where I'm not. But, but like I'm sleeping late, looking at things, thinking of like who's next or what's next or what do I do? How yeah. do I make this better? So it, it is tough. 
but I do have those days where I'm like, you know what, like I'm just gonna post one thing today because it is what like, I want to, and and that's it. You know, I'm not gonna share stuff. I'm just gonna disconnect for a couple hours or disconnect for this whole day. Um, and it's definitely needed because it's like I said, we're just or I am just on there. But it is tough as a content creator. I don't have struggle on what to create. There's so many ideas that I have. I just struggle with at times in terms of mental health and everything. Like, how do I have that balance, you know, and that ba- boundary too of putting that phone away? Like, nope, I'm not going to click on that app. <laughs> I'm not going to swipe up and, like, you know, open the phone. <laughs> not going to do it. <laughs> I'll watch Enamorándonos on Univision if that's it, or I'll hang out with the family. <laughs> but I am not going to do this today. So it is, um, it, is, but it is tough though. It is tough to to try to disconnect. But I mean, the messages like you mentioned are, are what keeps me going. Like honestly, the the community there. I like to mention that it's a community, not my fault. It's the community that we have on social media, uh, specifically on Instagram. It's like it's wow. You know, I lose followers each day, and I gain more followers each day, etc. But yeah, the messages, the DMs, the people help what they share on the post. Any negative stuff, I don't really get negative, but any negative, I'll just block them and remove them. Like, I don't have time for that. But any everything, like the amount of messages, like you mentioned, when they're sharing something, I'm like, wow, you know, like this is awesome, you know. So it's it's tough to to not feel, you know, like I feel when they're telling me things, I connect, I, I may not connect at times because it's not my experience, but I'll. It's it's really beautiful how an, an Instagram page can provide so, something powerful, no? And it comes with a lot of responsibility. Now I feel like wow, like I have so many amount of followers or whatever. Like I I, I have to <laughs> he's be on Spider Man now. Yeah, <laughs> I'm quoting uh, Uncle Ben. I'm quoting Uncle Ben, but it's it's definitely it's definitely Aww. beautiful for sure. So. Among all of the work that you do for everyone else, I see that you continue to work on yourself. I recently saw the post that you you put up about your PhD re, uh, rejection, and I honestly found that very to be very transparent and very honest and refreshing. How did that change the outlook of what you're currently doing and um, what you're looking to do? Great question. Nice to meet you, Paula. Um... So I'm going to take you back. No, let's go back to pandemic. We are still in pandemic. But in 2020, when August of 20, August 14 of 2020, I officially got my master's degree, even though I should have gotten it like years ago. I already, ya lo tenía terminado, but for whatever that was, one test I had to do, I hadn't done it, life happened. So I finally did it. I got my degree. I always had the excuse. Oh, I can't leave this job. I can't leave California, the Bay Area, because I still have to complete that. I can't not do it. So many thousands of dollars that I'm in debt because of it. So I finally got that degree. Boom, my email from the professor. Con felicidades, has completado all the requirements. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, snap. Everything that was holding me back, like I can yeah. do, I can go anywhere now. So that August of 2020, pandemic obviously was going on. Well, you know, it was still on, but it slowed me down. I got the degree. Now I'm like, what? I, what? what's next for me? I thought PhD. Now I can do the PhD. It's perfect. Like, I'm not spending money. I'm not doing anything. I'm just here at home every day because of pandemic. So I started, like, really searching a PhD programs. I've always wanted, right? Let me speed up the process. During that time, sorry, in August of 22, and at the same time, I started the Find Your Purpose series uh, because I wanted to be approachable for my students. I wanted to yeah. still be a resource for them in a different way. Like, I could just bring folks who come and talk about their story and college experience. And hopefully students can relate. An engineer, someone who did nursing, someone who went to community college. That was the first season, very education focused. And then PhD programs. And then, boom, 2021 starts. I slowly start getting uh, rejection letters. Now, boom, this university. Oh, no. Boom, this one. I'm like, okay, I still have that one hope. But for me, the plan was, okay, I've been in this institution that I've been working for. It's going to be five years. I can start my PhD tie a bow and get goodbye boom this is my turn it's my turn to find essentially my purpose um and then i got a rejection letters boom nada so that really crumbled uh, crushed my 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 experience uh my hopes my dreams no i'm like i'm already like in my 30 this was perfect i would have graduated my PhD like almost at 40 like i'm already kind of late in the game compared to what people do their phds no so it didn't happen but then Mira cómo funciona la vida, right? That door was closed, but then Perez Advisors started picking up. I'm not compa- yeah. I'm not saying Perez Advisors is a PhD, but it it definitely has given me a lot of experience, a lot of knowledge, a lot of network, and a lot of more development. 
um, if I would have not done anything, right? So that started picking up. I started like collaborating with more folks. So then like, aquí estamos, no? a year later after that, uh, what I feel has really changed this page from an educational page of just college experience to something more of like comunidad and, and, and the Latino culture and a little bit of everything, it's essentially me. Like I'm the center of this page. Perez the advisor is is me. So like I'm I'm talking about my experiences, my students' experiences, my family's experiences, the mental health stuff or the machismo stuff that I talk about. That's a, my, and my own personal point of view. Is in my own thing. So what I feel like it's important in this page is to just to be authentic and, and transparent, like you you said, you no, know, being transparent and just really sharing. Like these are my struggles. This is I'm not sh- just posting. You know, hey, look. These are the beautiful things that I'm doing. These are all my accomplishments. Heck no, you can just go to LinkedIn for that, right? So I'm really sharing also my struggles, being transparent of, of what I've been, what I'm dealing each day, just like when Rafa, Rafa asked me right now about mental health and, and, and social media. It is very true. You know, I'm still struggling, struggling with that. I know I mentioned it on social media, but I'm also struggling with it. So um, I feel like it's that's what people have really connected with my with my page because I... I, I'm no me como decimos in in la, in I don't know if this is Latin America, but makes in pelos en la lengua, right? Like I just say how it is. This is what I've like, yeah. This is who I am. Take it or leave it. And this is what I'm experiencing. There, I invite folks to to join me in this journey of me um, unlearning some of these cycles, right? These traumas that are placed on us as as me as a Latino male. Same thing with mental health. And I'm gonna be a father in a couple of weeks, so. You're probably going to be seeing Congrats. content creation. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. Content creation of what it means to be a dad, no? And, and, and all these things. So it's like I share my, my, my pieces of my life. I don't share my whole life, obviously, but I share pieces of my life. And hopefully people feel heard and feel seen. Um, oh, wow. Like me too, you know? Um, because at the end of the day, you know, for a lot of us, when we experience life or education or being in a professional job or office setting, We've never seen anyone in our families do that. And I didn't see my parents experience a lot of things that I've experienced, right? Because their experience was different in this country, has been different in this country. So I'm just sharing out there, mira, esto es lo que yo estoy pasando. Um, and these are the things that, that I hope that you can see that you're not alone in all this, like I said. So it's kind of very similar philosophy that I take with my students. Um, and... Yeah, so the page, like I said, has definitely has evolved. I have because I have evolved <laughs> throughout this one year after those rejections yeah. happened. So you mentioned college life and your students. And um, with that being said, I see that you're a proponent of Greek life. What value do you feel that that adds to a student's journey? Oh, Greek life. Um, great question, because I'm, I'm a big advocate for Greek life um, or just essentially students getting involved, finding a community on campus, I would say. Um, I focus on Greek life because Greek life definitely gave me a lot of, it totally changed my experience. It changed my, my life, I could say. I mean, not to sound like that, but it definitely changed my life and in, in in for the good. Um, I've always been this, or not necessarily before Greek life, I've, I've always was like this person who un poco timido, like a little shy, vocal for sure. When you know, when the when the person as a male, whenever I was angry, whenever I was, you know, I was able to express those emotions, right? So, but very quiet. So in the classroom, you'll see me at the back of the classroom. Whenever I wanted to ask about something in class, I would kind of doubt myself. All the self doubt. That's the first gen. Um, so Greek life definitely helped me find confidence in myself. It gave me a voice, gave me a purpose. It gave me all these things. I to always tell my students, the reason that I work as an advisor and I work with students in college was, is because of Greek life. Um, as a Greek life member or getting involved on campus, president, I was able to collaborate with network, all these things, right? That a traditional classroom or class never gave me. So that's why I always mention Greek life and on top of that, found a family away from home. As, as first gens, as Latinos, we experience homesickness when we move away from home because oh, somos así, you know, we're like this with our family. You take that away from us. We're not used to that. Like, 
we hardly even go to sleepovers with friends. Like, you've seen all the memes, right? You've seen all the reels. So, like, we don't do that porque es que mi mamá nunca, uno nunca sabe, right? You've seen the, the, uh, the Cardi B. <laughs> so, it is very true. Like, I never went to sleepovers with, with friends. I, I would never even, I didn't even went to sixth grade camp because it was a whole week. I was like, my mom was like, ¿Qué va a ser una semana? I'm like, I don't know. So, I, she didn't sign in. I didn't want to go and I didn't do it. So, so all these things, right? So, as a Latino, moving away from home, that was really challenging. So, Greek life definitely gave me that, that, that home, right? Is Greek life perfect? No, it's not. There's a lot of growth that needs to be happening in, fraternity, in sororities and fraternities, um, which, you know, that, that, that if you look at, if you listen to the podcast, you'll be able to start seeing some of those themes that I'll be kind of bringing up yeah. slowly with my guests. Again, 2022. Now I'm going to be first, the first season of, of my podcast was very like, tell me about the history of the organization. What made you join this organization? But now I will touch on those things, but also going to be touching, touching on two. Why is there hazy? Why is there this? Why is there all these things? So yeah. kind of making those changes in Greek organizations. Um, so, but yeah, I'm always an advocate for it because these Greek organizations, specifically the Latino Greek organizations and the African-American Greek organizations, multicultural ones, uh, have been because of a purpose, not because they didn't have a voice in an institution that was built not for them. Public white institutions, and that here we are going to the institutions, not having the resources or the opportunities like, you know, our, our white colleagues and stuff. So these organizations were established for that, no? To find a home, to find representation. So the history component, impact and all that, like that's, that's very powerful for me. And that's why I try to highlight in the podcast and I try to highlight and advocate for that for the, my students in general and on the community that follow me on social media. And like I said, so, uh, Greek life is imperfect. Um, there's a lot of stories and experiences that have been not the best, right? And I do acknowledge that because it's very true. That's why it's, it's I, the honesty. Yeah, yeah. And I also want to be able to bring this space, like I said, to, to make those changes, to talk about those things, to so keep the organizations accountable, keep the members accountable. Like, no, we have a great space here. Let's make that positive change. Let's actually develop, you know, la, la comunidad, our, our, our members, et cetera. So, so yeah, like I said, it changed my life. Um, and I like to, provide that space to share stories of, 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 of the re- other Latinos who or, or members who have joined Latino multicultural Greek organizations. Yeah, there was something else, but se me fue. Se le voló. No, that's so good to hear. Thank you. That's, that's such a positive thing. Uh, traditionally, I don't think that we feel like those spaces are our spaces. So, I mean, first of all, congratulations on soon. And I want to also give you a shout out for all the hard work that you do and having the bravery for actually touching on these topics that many people shy away from. But um, you also have another podcast, right? Find Your Purpose. Yes, my Instagram. Can you tell us a little bit? The Instagram series, yes. (laughs) Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about what value that brings to your listeners and what topics you guys talk about on there? No, yes. Thank you, Cecilia. Um, we'll find your purpose. Like, like I was mentioning in the beginning, like it, it's, it's uh, basically an Instagram series. I thought about making it a podcast. I was like, ah, I should do it a podcast out of there. But I'm like, no, it's the same thing. No, I need to make it different. <laughs> so I kept, I've kept it as, a, as an Instagram um, series. And I think what brings value on here is because just like to have all um, have this space for to for narrative now for storytelling and for folks to share their purpose or their story and their passions is very similar to to my to the space that I have now for that find your purpose but I I want to focus on I've always focused on the educational aspect of things no the college experience um like I said in the beginning for season 1 that was the focus but then season 2 I started collaborating with folks that I didn't know I started reaching out to people who our content creators to share their story and essentially their purpose and why they have their own space on social media. Season three um, was a little bit more of like mental health and like kind of flirting with like talking about masculinity here and there, et cetera. And I was like, ah, no, no, no. And season four, like I said, has been more of like, you know what? This is what we're going to do. We're going to talk about all the things that no one really talks about, at least no one that looks like me is possibly talking about some of these things. So I'm like, no, I'm going to be that guy. I'm going to talk about some of these things that are uncomfortable. And it, has to, and it is uncomfortable because 
it's challenging us. You know, it's challenging our biases and it's challenging the things that we've never really experienced. It's making, for some think. Of us. making us think. <laughs> yes, making us sweat. Pero that has evolved and to find your purpose, it still has the heart of like storytelling, but now it's with a call to action. It's not now it's like let's let's reflect. Let's think. I want you to reflect as a person if this if this topic is about mental health. I want you to reflect, you know, and 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 if it's about masculinity and you're a male or you're female or whichever, uh, you're from the community. I want you to just reflect. How how are you uh, upholding some of these anti-blackness or some of these masculinity cycles, some of these uh, white privilege things, or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So I'm still gonna have guests still share about their stories, their like experiences, but talking about a specific topic like this Friday I'm going to be talking to uh, Abad about Afro-Mexicanos which I never learned in college about you know I, I majored in Spanish I did a post recently before I jumped onto the call with you all and I talked about how I majored in Spanish and masters in Spanish and I did Mex uh, Chicano studies as a minor and Latin American studies as a minor and no class was about Afro-Latinos no one mm -hmm. ever told me about Afro Mexicanos. No one ever mentioned anything. I might have might have just read a poem about Nicolas Guillén, the Cuban poet, um, and that's pretty much it. I'm like, how is this? How's I feel like I was cheated. <laughs> I'm supposed to hear, <laughs> you know, learning history and language and all these things, and there's a huge gap of 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 of, uh, of people that were silenced, that have been silenced, that I didn't get to read or, or learn about. So I'm like, this space now is trying to fill in those those pieces that I missed and that I want my community, like, is my community aware of these things? Is my community, is, what is Univision Telemundo not teaching our community? You know, it's teaching them something else. I want my, 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 my Find Your Purpose uh, segments to be able to, like, bring these things that we don't hear about, to bring these things that my parents are not aware of, you know, th things that La Comunidad my family are not, they don't talk about because, again, it might not be our experience. We might not see it on TV. It's not happening to a family member. But we just don't know, right? So I, I want this, those, those Instagram series um, have been, what would say, one of the most beautiful things of this whole content creation thing. So I, at least I would like to think. And what I'm thinking for the future for this Instagram series, ever since I got 10,000 community followers or followers, uh, something called badges were, were open. I don't know if everyone has yeah. them now, but <laughs> I don't know if it's a thing now for everybody, but... When I got to the 10 k I was like, oh, hell yeah, like now I can do all these things. So my goal one day, um, I always have the badges on there whenever I have an Instagram uh, live on. Because if anyone feels compelled to, you know, give me, buy a badge or whatever, whenever I feel like I have enough or a good momentum of badges from, from the community members who, who donate, then I want to have like a scholarship. You know, uh, be able to give a scholarship yeah, a from this Instagram. So it'll be find your purpose scholarship. Da -da. You know, I have I wore this shirt just for you guys. So it's the, the logo of it. So I'm like, yeah, that'll be pretty sick. A way to give back. The badge is not for me. Like this money's not for me. I want to give create create this and have something for for students or for dreamers or for you know some uh, students from the Latino community. So it's slowly, like I said, becoming something uh, much bigger for sure than than just me. So, and, and then and just the college experience, it's, it's becoming more of like, I'll go for the comunidad, whether you went to college or not, or whether you're 45, 25, et cetera, it should be hopefully something for you as well. That'd be awesome. I can't wait till I see like the Benjamin Perez grant. I'll be like, I remember when we talked about that. <laughs> That'd be too. pretty awesome, <laughs> right? <laughs> and, and I see that you went to San Jose State. And I had a few friends that graduated from San Jose State. And I know they would have appreciated to have a mentor or a guidance counselor like you. Do you think that you are the guidance counselor you wish you would have had? Or did you have one that helped you along the way? Never had one. Um, I like to say Ooh. that, you know, we as first-gen students or I as a first-gen student, uh, Latino student, I, the, my college experience was like, you know, going into like a corn maze, you know, you just don't know where you're going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, in, it's dark. You have a flashlight, so you might bump into elotes and stuff. I don't know. Um, just to continue <laughs> with the metaphor. <laughs> it's not a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> like eating elotes. Yeah, I'm thinking, no. yeah, I could bump into that. 
<laughs> no, but we're, it's like a labyrinth, right? So we don't know labyrinth, no, we don't know where we're going at times, and we don't have someone to either hold our hand or guide us, right? So, for I, I lacked uh, a lot of or missed a lot of opportunities. Um, I like to say my college experience was amazing. I learned a lot. I met great people, but I also missed a lot of out on a lot of opportunities, studying abroad, being part of something called EOP or retention programs. I luckily got into Greek life, right? If that, I was always against this. So I was like. I was never the type of student who was involved in anything because, again, I was really shy. So here I am, you know, yeah. that that really was the thing. But other than that, like, I didn't I didn't know. I missed a lot of opportunities. So I, I'm i trying to be the the mentor, the advisor that I didn't ever had, you know? Like, I wish someone would have told me, Sabes que, you're messing up. <laughs> Sabes mm-hmm. que, this is great. You know what? Take a break. Hey, it's okay to take a semester off, you know? Or if you're going through stuff because someone, family member pa- passed away or something, you know, you're you're there like, having to hold all these emotions of trying to go back home and do your exam or else the professor's going to fail you. What do you do? You sacrifice that yeah, or you do yeah. this. So all these things that sometimes no one told us, no, it's okay, go take that test. You send that email to the professor. You have every right to take a, a break because of your mental health state. All these things, like no one ever told me. So I sacrificed mental health, sacrificed family things, sacrificed a lot of these things because, again, I didn't know what were my rights. I was just getting in that because the, the goal was, like the question that Rafa asked me in the beginning, of getting that degree that was the focus regardless of anything else i had to do that so now i'm telling my students yo you don't have to graduate in four years you graduate in four or five four or five years no pasa nada you don't gotta take out all that whole loan tell me why so i always ask my i always tell my students i'm not gonna tell you what to do i am not gonna um, hold your hand either this is your life this is your experience if you i'm gonna yo, i'm gonna ask you why Por qué? oh i want to major in this why Oh, I want to uh, take yeah. 18 units. Okay, cool. Why? Mm-hmm. You know, so just tell me your why. Again, your, your, your reason. Okay, cool. You want to hear my opinion? No? Yes? Okay, cool. I'll tell you or no. I'll respect it. But I, I tell my students, regardless of the decision that you make uh, for your future, et cetera, like for, in terms of education, and it, it can go into personal as well, um, just know that on the, si- on the other side of that decision, I'll be there. You know, to, I got you. So if you fall, you may fall and scrape yourself. I'm going to help you come back up. Don't feel like you're not alone. You know, no, no, yeah, solo. Awesome. when a lot of the things when I experienced, right, when I was on academic probation or when I got a financial probation or whenever I got this and this and that, no, no one was on the other side of that decision or that experience, right? So I had to internalize all that. I remember coming back home whenever your parents would ask you, ¿Cómo te va en la universidad? Mm-hmm. Them putting you on this pedestal that you are the example to follow for all the next generation and all the other little cousins and friend cousins and all that. Oh, mira, Benjamin, he's doing all these things. I'm like, damn, no, I'm not. <laughs> you know, I'm over here struggling, <laughs> trying to survive. So, the same thing. so yeah, that's, that's, I try to be that advisor for my students um, to tell them that, you know, I got you essentially. Um, but I, I, I always tell them, I'm not going to do it for you. I'm going to teach you once, <laughs> but then tú lo vas a hacer because I, wa- I want you to be able to, you know, drive essentially your own journey. Um, I'm just walking, riding with you on the passenger well, seat. Say you know? your students are very lucky to have you there. Yeah, <laughs> no. for real. <laughs> thank you, thank you. have that. We're all no. kind of stumbling alone in the dark with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know some students trust me. They're like, ah, como enfada. But I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather you be annoyed of me, but don't 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 ghost me. I always tell my students, I ask for you to, for two things. Don't you don't um don't stay quiet and don't be shy to ask me for support. Call me, text me, send me a DM, an email, whatever. Just let let me know. And then second thing, don't ghost me. That's that's like if you don't want my support, yeah. just tell me. <laughs> no pasa nada, you know. Right, yeah. If you need a break of two A, can you reach out to me in three months? Great. I'll re- I'll give you your space. They had a Benjamin Phil. That's it. They were like, they were capped <laughs> out. That's it. No more. No more. Guy keeps texting us. We need a Perez filter. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's actually funny that, you know, we talked about it before, how you're becoming a dad. And it's kind of funny that this is her question because I feel the same way from my side, not from a counselor's perspective, um, but from like a dad's perspective. Because, see, I grew up with a single mom. You know what I'm saying? Like she, she was basically just, being all of the different things. So I, for myself, never grew up 
with all the examples you would normally get from like a father figure or this and that, you know, regardless of how many, you know, stepdads we've, we've encountered, we don't really kind of develop that relationship, so to speak. Or at least I never did. There are some people who are fortunate too. Um, so for me, it's, it's extremely important that what you do, you're doing it even at the level just as an advisor. Because for some people, this is about as close to kind of a dad as they're going to get, which is, which is extremely important. A lot of people don't get that. You know, you got a lot of students who grew up in the same type of household I did. And so when we talk about that mentor question, when we talk about that counselor question, you know, the person who's dabbing in to sit there and say, hey, this isn't the right way, you know, based on my opinions of what you're doing. Because look, there's a lot of people who go to degrees that just don't, don't amount to anything. Like, because they feel like these degrees are what I can do, but at the end of the tunnel, those degrees don't really pay because there's not a lot of jobs for those degrees and things like that. And at the end of the, you know, the end of the term, they have all these huge student loans and they don't have the opportunity to show for it, to be able to pay them back or to at least reduce that. So, you know, as, as far as like the college pitfalls and things like that, or even the high school ones, it's just important to have someone like you in their lives to be able to do that. So I commend you, man, because... Um, it's going to take you now into this journey because we were talking about, are you going to be a dad? <laughs> are you, I, I'm a dad. I got three kids, had the time of raising them on my own. What, what do you think you, are you ready for? And what do you think you're the most afraid of? You see, like, I mean, first off, thank you. You know, thank you for your words. It is there. It is very, um, you know, unique in the position that I am because when I look at advisors in education, higher education, or even the organization that I work for, um, there's very limited amount of, when we talk about males, very a little bit of males who do this work. So um, working with students of color, you know, our, our black students, our Latino students, our, our male black and Latino students are the ones who, who have the lowest graduation rates in college, so the largest dropout rates. So having more males be there, it's, it's very important because we're doing a lot of studying and a lot of um learning and, and trying to get our students perspectives of is our students are struggling in in college not because of they are bad students there's more to it you know uh there's more is it the institution it's yeah. also like a family thing is it like family pressures what's going on with what's happening to them right that um that's ha causing some of these things so just to cut it short, but to to be a, a male advisor is is very it's a big privilege, you know, and a huge responsibility. And like I said, just like for the same thing for the page, I'm trying to continue evolving to support and help their students, those students, and all students, right? But specifically those students, because my experience as a student, it's not the same as theirs, you know. And even if we're, we speak the same language and we may look alike, still not the same, right? So as a father, um, you see that the way that the, the world works. Um, I got rejected for PhD programs and the Perez advice started to pick up. And when it's when I really started learning and reflecting on mental health, on my own biases, on my own traumas. I had already kind of done some of that work in the, in the past, but not fully really reflect on it every day because I see the content and I'm writing it and I'm sharing it. Yeah. And my own doubts and my own experiences. And as a male, right, with, with machismo and all that, if you got that como saying, like some of these things that I'm applying to my life, it's not just me saying, I'm actually doing them like, the other day, like, with my family, right, we we're talking about something, and I got so irritated. I, I, back five years ago, ten years ago, I would have just lashed, boom, wouldn't have been like a, um, a dickhead. But now it's like, you know what? Let me breathe in. <laughs> <laughs> let me breathe in. Let me have that patience. Let me, let me approach this a little bit different, you know? So it's just, yeah. it has really helped me. And I always tell people social media has really helped me grow, which is, cra which is crazy to, to say. Like social media could be all these things. And as, now that I'm going to be a father, all these things that I'm learning, you know, following Leslie from um, um, Latinx Parenting and all these different pages who talk about these things, I'm going to be a father of a baby girl. So as a male, like, oh, don't care, uh, you know, know. I got to be a better, I got to be a good, I got to be a good man, no, to continue working to be a good man so I can be a great father and empower this, this little girl to be. Everything that I couldn't be, right? So everything that my mom and like, we have really powerful women in our in our families, but there was always been machismo that kind of brings that down, right? So uh, yeah. here I'm I'm still trying to unlearn a lot of things, and I will make mistakes, right? So it's it's like it's it's funny how these things work because here we are now, and I'm I'm doing trying to do that work, uh, to to do that. So like, so I'm very very excited, super 
super i mean like i said in a couple of weeks like we're already on on month nine essentially we started so I was like oh. oh it's anytime soon yeah it's anytime soon yeah i i need the invitation to when the birth is taking place no i'm just kidding i'm only kidding that would be weird I'll be, I'll be, your wife is sitting there like, what are you doing here? Uh, he invited me. <laughs> That's He's a like, babbler. That's a babbler. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, we're here at a special event with Ben Javi Perez and he's having a baby. It's like, <laughs> so it'll be advertised like a, like a news cycle. So Ben I mean, if people wanted to follow your content or the podcast, where would they go? They could definitely follow me at uh, Perez the Advisor, right? There, um, I'm on TikTok. On TikTok, you'd be able to find a little bit more like, the funny stuff, you know, just me arguing with my mom or me, like, you know, experiencing certain things. So that's the funny stuff. There's a little bit of everything. It's just my personality. On Twitter, you may see some stuff when I post some quotes here and there. Uh, but on Instagram, I will say it's the heart of my work. You'll see the funny stuff yeah. here and there at times. But you also see, like, more of, like, my own personal things that I share. Uh, the, you know, the quotes, the Instagram series, and, and all the beautiful collaborations of, of the comunidad that we're part of. Um, and in the podcast, you can still see some parts of it there, but essentially the podcast, uh, Latinx Greek Life, you can find it on all the podcast platforms uh, that you that are out there. I don't know how to, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot out there, but the most popular ones, you can find it out there. Uh, but yes, Perez the Advisor uh, is essentially on Instagram. It's like the heart of, of the work. Very cool, Benjamin. Thank you for joining us, man. This was a great conversation. No, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, all three of you, for. Uh, for inviting me and for sharing me on my story. You know, every time I get the opportunity to share my story, it's one of the hardest things, but it's one of the most beautiful things because I get to share or reflect on things that I, I don't really do. You know, like I'm always on the other side asking the questions. I'm like, yeah. oh, yeah, you know, like tell me about the time and this and snap. And now it's like being able to just do that on my own and with you all, like it's, it's beautiful. So thank you for, for being in community with me. And, and I promise I'll, I'll follow you. I'll follow you back. On Instagram. Oh, I'm gonna be watching. <laughs> I'm gonna be watching. I was like, man, he has no idea what's going on in my life. This man does not follow me. He he sees the show. <laughs> I was salty. I was gonna say something, you know. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, no, but honestly, thank you, thank you once again for joining the show, ladies and gentlemen. That is our show for today. You can listen to us on Neighborhood Radio on Radio 89 on Saturdays at 5 p.m. Eastern Time, and on all popular apps. Follow us on social media at Latin Babbler Show. And visit our website, www.latinbabbler.com. Brand new. We just put it up. We just fixed it up. And I'm the Latin Babbler, along with Cecilia, along with Paul, Paula. I call her Paul. <laughs> along with Paula and <laughs> Ben Haming. We are out. Desde Nicaragua hasta Costa Rica, con esta canción todo el mundo se identifica. Llamen a los chilenos y a los cubanos. Llamen a Puerto Rico y a los mexicanos. Que ya se armó la rumba desde Panamá hasta Ecuador. Vámonos a Perú. Salvador, que se escuche en Brasil y Argentina Yo quiero un grito de mi gente latina Y levantaré mi bandera Estando en mi país o estando allá afuera Porque para mí mira noches en fronteras Yo levantaré mi bandera